Joining me now to talk more about this is Bradley Bowman. He is the Senior Director of the Center on Military and Political Power at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He's also an Afghanistan veteran and served as National Security Advisor to U.S. Senators. Welcome. So great to have you with us. So lawmakers are grilling Secretary Blinken this week about the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan and the evacuation efforts. What are Democrats specifically looking to hear, and what do Republicans want to hear from the Secretary of State? No, thanks uh, for the opportunity to join you, and thanks for the question. You know, the first draft of, of history regarding the withdrawal from Afghanistan is being written as we speak, and Secretary Blinken's testimony today before the House Foreign Affairs Committee and tomorrow before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee is really going to be a significant component of the first chapter of that draft. What is indisputable is that we've seen a major national security and humanitarian disaster in Afghanistan. And you're going to have some members who are really going to try to understand what happened and learn the lessons so we don't repeat those mistakes. And as someone who worked in the U.S. Senate for nine years, you can also see some members engaging in partisan politics with an eye on the next election, trying to cast blame on the other party. And so they each are going to have questions that are fairly predictable uh, uh, in pursuit of those objectives. And this is going to see, I think it's safe to say this is going to be a not fun two days for Secretary Blinken. All right. So, Bradley, do we have any idea of who is still in Afghanistan and needs to get out? And how do we expect this to play out politically? No. Well, thank you. No, we know that uh, when the U.S. military withdrew on, on, on the uh, timeline based uh, withdrawal that ignored conditions, there were roughly 100 to 200 Americans that were left behind. Some of those have been able to get out. I think there are still some there. Uh, and then we have thousands of, of vulnerable Afghans. And by vulnerable Afghans, I would include that Afghans who, are, uh, who had these special immigrant visas who had worked with the U.S. government. And we had made a commitment to help get out. And then also kind of, uh, quote unquote, at risk Afghans, people that are being targeted for the Taliban for a variety of other reasons. And there are thousands of them still there. And this is really something I think you can expect Republicans to focus on. They're going to be eager to say that the reasons for this catastrophe was how the withdrawal is conducted. They're going to probably highlight how many people have been left behind or, quote unquote, stranded. And there might also be concerns from Republicans regarding how effective was the vetting for many of the Afghans who were brought to the United States. And you can also expect to hear Republicans highlighting the uh, very real links, frankly, between the Taliban and Al Qaeda. Democrats, on the other hand, I think are going to want to emphasize that President Biden inherited a horrible situation from President Trump. He inherited the February 2020 agreement with the Taliban. Uh, suggesting that that agreement uh, somehow forced the president to proceed with this withdrawal. And they probably will highlight, uh, I think rightly, the extraordinary service of our U.S. service members, bravely serving in Kabul, but helping to get more than 120,000 people airlifted out in one of the most significant air, airlifts in modern history. Absolutely. And, and as you pointed out, uh, this administration is coming under fire for the way this withdrawal transpired, how quickly the Taliban took over uh, Afghanistan after U.S. troops pulled out and for the chaotic evacuation efforts, even as you say, it was heroic on the one hand and very successful on the other. Um, so what can Secretary Blinken say or do to divert some of this heat off of the Biden administration? You know, it, it's a good question. I suspect that Secretary Blinken's going to really focus on on the, uh, the the fact that they did get you know roughly 124,000 people evacuated under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. Uh, uh, I think they're going to try to uh, appropriately give credit to the U.S. service members, including those who bravely gave their lives. I mean, let's be clear what was happening. These were Afghan men, women, and, and children trying to escape the Taliban regime. And we had American service members, in some cases, waiting out into the crowd to help them get to freedom and safety. And they were murdered by ISIS-K, isis Corsa. And so true. So I suspect he will rightly highlight the, the bravery of those service members and how the administration did get a lot of people out and how they were dealt a tough hand by the Trump administration. But, uh, you know, I, I think he's going to have a hard time avoiding some of the tough questions, like how the new Taliban cabinet includes no women. It includes Siraj Haqqani, the head of the Qani network is one of the most formidable terrorist organizations in the world that's linked to al-Qaeda, and that you have an interim prime minister who was the guy who, after 9-11, refused to give up Osama bin Laden. So this really is a cabinet that only al-Qaeda could love. And the, uh, the Biden administration is now considering whether they want to recognize that government. And there's some incentive to do that because they need things from the Taliban. 
But the fact is the Taliban remains attached to the hip with al-Qaeda. Right. No doubt Secretary Blinken will be in the hot seat this afternoon. Bradley Bowman, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight.